Hi, it's Sam, and in this video, I'm going to explain the deep connections between the latest in neuroscience, which is the science of the brain and how the brain actually functions, and its connections to Vedic astrology and how we can understand the specifics of how the brain works relative to our karma and the astrology and how to un tangle the deep karmic knots and inner conflicts that really plague our mind and stunt our spiritual growth. You're going to love this and you want to stick around until the end of the video because I'm also going to give you a great exercise that I found that's helped me untangle a lot of my inner conflicts which really shows the different parts of the brain um, sort of at war with each other and I'm sure that this exercise will really help you as well. So let's get started. I've recently been doing a lot of study of the brain and the latest in neuroscience and how the brain actually works um, and also a lot of modern quantum physics and quantum mechanics and how at the sub-molecular level we are shaping reality. Um, and I've been bringing these things together and organizing them with the Vedic sciences and Vedic astrology and in this series of videos I'm going to be bringing together all of these um, sciences for you in a way that I think you're going to really get a lot out of. So in this video I'm talking about modern neuroscience and how understanding the brain can really help us understand our deep inner conflicts in a general sense and then how we can understand them even more deeply through the astrological model which is a place that modern neuroscience doesn't even dare to go and then how we can even use some exercises to resolve these inner conflicts and live a happier life. These are the kinds of things that I talk about in my certification course. Actually, my certification course students, they study these inner conflicts all the time um, as we discuss the different planets. But now, the latest in neuroscience really affirms and backs up scientifically what I've been teaching my students in the certification course for years. So I'm going to expose you to this teaching now. So essentially, there are a few fundamental um, principles that I'm going to be outlining in this video. Um, the first is this concept called the triune brain, which is the idea that we actually have three brains, three brains that sit one on top of the other. One is called the reptile brain, or the R-complex brain. The other is the mammal brain, or what's called the limbic system, the limbic brain. And then there's the human brain. Right now, as you listen to this, it's mainly the human brain, the brain of concepts and projecting into the future. So these three brains sit one on top of the other, and there's a hierarchy um, of importance within these three brains. The reptile brain is actually the brain that runs all of your autonomic functions. It keeps you alive. It's the sort of survival brain, like every reptile. Um, it controls things like your heartbeat and your body temperature and primal instincts and, and um, you know, things like aggression, territory, conquer or be conquered, you know, sex for procreation. And I say sex for procreation because the next level brain, which is the mammal brain, um, uses sex or sees sex as a bonding mechanism where we're, we don't just have sex like an animal, you know, like a reptile, but also to convey love. And that's the mammal brain. That's called the limbic system brain. The limbic system brain sits on top of the reptile brain, and it's the brain of mammals. It's the mammal brain, which likes connection, family, um, nurturing, love, enjoyment, being happy. Those things hang out in the limbic system brain. It's the brain of emotions. It's like the emotional brain. Uh, the reptile brain is like the physical survival brain. The mammal brain is the happiness brain, the brain of you know wanting to get along with people and our family structures and our relationships and wanting to enjoy life. And then there's the human brain, um, w w which operates the part of the brain called like the neocortex and the part of the brain that projects into the future and seeks meaning and purpose and direction and uses symbols and language and seeks religion. These are things that are the next level up from the mammal brain that just, you know, like you can see, for instance, like with chimpanzees, you know, they are very much established in that mammal brain. And we have a part of us that's really like an inner chimp. 
like an inner chimpanzee that is very motivated by the same things that the chimpanzee is motivated by. But then on the highest on like the highest level, the part of us that's not just a chimpanzee is um, focused on, sorry, some of these things make me laugh when I say them, um, have us focused on higher meaning and purpose like religion, you know, our dreams and our hopes for the future and things like that. Most of our inner conflicts revolve around these three brains um, in conflict with each other. Now, for instance, let's say that let's just say an example of a lot of people that come into my life that you think about changing your career and doing something that's of higher value, higher meaning, like let's say being an astrologer, you know, like doing astrology or helping people with astrology or some other kind of healing modality. Um, that's part of the human brain that projects into the future and is inspired by something bigger in their life. But then let's say your family, the people in your life, like your husband or your children or your friends, they think, oh, there she is in that kind of weird, wacky, I want to be in astrologer mode. And the people around you don't necessarily understand it. They don't necessarily approve of it. And then there's another level, a survival brain, like the reptile brain says, but how can you earn enough money at that? You need to survive. You know, survival and money things are very much in that rept that sort of reptilian wiring, that's old wiring that keeps you alive. And so you'll have an inner conflict. Let's say part of you wants to do astrology, let's say, or wants to, you know, really make a difference in a higher way. You want to write a book that's going to help people or whatever. But a lot of people maybe don't understand it, or even if you get some support, your social circle doesn't really approve, let's say, maybe, and you certainly aren't so sure about how you can make money at that. So this creates an inner conflict, and these are very common. Our energy gets hung up in these inner conflicts, and as much as we think we are this higher human brain, that that's what's calling the shots, the truth of the matter is we're much, much more motivated by the lower two brains, especially the reptile brain. The reptile brain is really running the show more than any other brain. And then the mammal brain of, you know, approval from your friends and family. And then we tend to sacrifice our higher visions and our higher dreams to those other base fears. Fear is more of a thing of the reptile brain and acceptance is the thing of the mammal brain. We have to understand that even acceptance is a very scary thing to risk. Risk being ostracized from the tribe or from the herd is also very scary. Like for instance if you use the example of chimpanzees or other primates to be ostracized from the herd or from the group or whatever they're called actually a, um, a group of I think it's chimpanzees are called a congress. I think it's chimpanzees or maybe orangutans they're called a congress of orangutans, but anyway, to be ostracized from that group would almost could mean death, because you need the group for your survival. And so there's a part of us that equates, you know, unpopularity with extreme danger. So these inner conflicts and this wiring in our brain, it's very old, it's very habitual, and we, as much as we tend to think that the human and the and the brain of ideas is the one that's in control. The opposite is true. Modern neuroscience understands this. This is one structure. I'm actually making a course where I talk about neuroscience on several different levels, but this is one of the levels that I talk about at first, is the three brains. And neuroscience understands a lot of the things to do with the brain, um, including what's called the reticular activating system, which shows that we only notice what we focus on, and we have things like change blindness, and we have a lot of um, cognitive biases and the way the brain forms patterns through what's called myelination. These habits are deeply embedded. Where neuroscience doesn't even begin to penetrate is what me as an astrologer and you as perhaps an astrology student could also really benefit. Because rather than it just being a general thing, like this is a general concept which can be very helpful for you to understand, oh yes, this is my three brains in conflict, astrology shows it specifically, like for instance, the three brains are related directly to the three gunas, which is a fundamental concept. Saturn and Mars rule that reptile brain, fear and aggression. 
Saturn is the determination to survive and to protect herself from danger. Mars is that physical animal in the moment who maybe has to fight to survive. And it's also the, you know, the pulse of the body and its heartbeat and its vitality in the moment. So Mars and Saturn rule that Tomasic brain, that reptile brain, and then the mammal brain of desires and being happy and inter interaction with others in a social setting is Venus and Mercury. They're the Rajasic planets. They share and share alike. They're about evenness, equality, communication, mutuality. That's what that's the currency of the mammal brain. And then the human brain, the higher brain, is related to the sattvic planets of Sun, Moon, and Jupiter, where we dream about the future, where we, you know, where we serve a higher purpose, like a mother and a father serving their child so that the family can grow, and these larger virtues that then get migrated up into things like spiritual purpose and higher contribution, they come from the sattvic brain. That's just a large structure where we can understand these three brains better, because once we then fill in these planetary qualities, we can understand the three brains better, now again, realize modern neuroscientists don't because they don't have astrology. So as astrologers or as someone who would like be an astrology student, at least of mine, you would understand those three brains better. But then to take it even further, you have an astrology chart. You have a relationship with each of those things specifically. So your specific inner conflicts, your specific reptile brain, what triggers your fight or flight response? Fight or flight is Mars and Saturn. Fight Mars. Flee Saturn. Total reptile response. Right? Your particular reptile brain and your particular fight or flight response is shown by your chart. How those things express themselves in your life. Your particular, you know, mammal approach and how you get along with people and culture and how well you interact and communicate is shown by your Mercury Venus. Your human brain, your higher virtues are shown by Jupiter, Venus, and the moon. So again, you'll often see where these things can interfere with each other. Perhaps you have, perhaps the Jupiter in you, which is moving, you know, wanting to move to the next level as a teacher. Perhaps that Jupiter, which is a sattvic planet, is in a tamasic sign. So it's more concerned with fear and worry and stress and not necessarily worried about getting bogged down in the distractions of being happy, which is where it would be if you were if it was in a rajasic sign, then the thing that would prevent you from becoming an astrology teacher would be more related to the acceptance and the approval of others, perhaps. Not necessarily the fear of not having enough money, which would be if it was in a tamasic sign. These are the things that we can understand when we start to apply astrological principles to neuroscience and these neuroscientific facts. And again, this is one facet of the neuroscience that I'm breaking out in a course that I'm making on neuroscience, which is, I, I'm, I'm sorry, on neuroscience, quantum physics, and astrology. This is actually called quantum astrology, quantum Vedic astrology, as you can see at this page. And that's going to be part of my certification program from now on. And you can register for those things here very soon. I'm going to be opening up the registration for that course and my certification course for the upcoming year for the September semester. And this course, it's about a seven hour course on quantum mechanics, neuroscience, Vedic astrology, will be included in that. Again, this is the specificity when we're looking at astrology. This is what we're actually doing. We're looking at how the brain works. I just talked very quickly about the three brain concept, the triune brain, which really is just another way, it's the way modern neuroscience is clarifying what we know in Vedic astrology as the three gunas, but we see it as the three brains, and how we can resolve these inner conflicts. So I told you at the beginning that I had a great exercise for you to help untangle some of your um, inner conflicts, and I'm going to give that to you now. What this is going to do is help you overcome fear, because the biggest problem in the triune brain um, model as far as preventing us from, you know, becoming all we can become is fear. Um, fear is about the past holding you back. Um, and it's, it's something lording over you from the past that has you stuck. You know, the way fear really shows up is, is worry. So what I want you to do is take maybe five to ten minutes and literally list everything that you're worried about. Everything that you're worried about 
in your life. I know that sounds like a lot, but you'll eventually run out of things and you'll know that you've kind of reached the end when you start kind of laughing. And there'll be larger and smaller versions of fears, I'm sorry, of things that you worry about. And they'll be more clear and less clear as you go forward. So first, I want you to write down the things that you worry about. So go ahead and pause the video and do this. Actually, really do it. Pause the video and write down the things that you are worrying about because these are holding you back. They ha they're sitting at the base of all of your best intentions, undermining your larger efforts and undermining that part of you that wants to grow. So go ahead, pause the video and write down everything that you're worried about. Okay, so I hope that felt good and you probably have an exhaustive list, I hope, and I hope you really did this. Okay, so now I want you to go back and put a circle next to those things that you can't control, those things on the list that you can't control. Now, perhaps there are, some of them are, you know, very abstract, like we all, or at least a lot of us worry about things like global warming. Now, maybe you could say you can control it by not driving or something, but I mean, really, that's one of those things you would probably put a circle around because, I mean, day to day, something that you can't control. Humanity destroying the planet or something like that. So a circle around the things that you can't control. If you need to pause it, if you need to pause the video, then you can do that. Now put a star next to the things you can control. Like let's say some of it is, you know, I worry about, you know, not, you know, like being overweight. I don't know, as an example. Or, you know, eating, eating bad food. Now, what I want you to do is those things that you can control. Like if one of them was, let's say, you worry about being overweight and getting sick, that would be something that you can control. So you would move that over to another document or put it in another column on that same page. And the other items, you're just going to let go. The things you can't control. I want you to really, really consciously concentrate on letting them go. I mean, really, don't just say, okay, I'll let them go. Because it's not that easy, okay? You have some investment in this. But really, maybe you can't let them go right now. That's okay. But I want you to really look at this idea. Like, let's say it's something like humanity destroying the planet or global warming or something like that that really has you, like, you worry about this. And people tell me these things. There are people who don't make a commitment to the future because they're like, well, but, you know, the economic, you know, the Illuminati, the economic collapse is going to happen anyway, so why do anything? So again, that kind of stuff, I want you to try to consciously let them go. And it requires presence, and it requires intention, but try to consciously let them go. And then the other things, you want to try to do whatever you can to get them handled. One at a time, like let's say one of them was, you know, you know, lose some weight, get your habits under control, worry about your health. Then just find, you know, one or two things that you can do that you can try to work on. Now there are ways again, you know, to do these kinds of things, but the biggest part of this exercise is letting go of the things you can't control. First identify them, list them out, then say, I'm going to put this aside and the things that I worry about that I can control, I'm going to make a vow to eat a little bit better. I'm going to make a vow to get up a little bit earlier, whatever it is. So to give you an example of how some of these high level or abstract worries can undermine our path and how you can see the three brains interfering is, let's say something like worrying about humanity destroying the planet, or, you know, something like global warming, which is, a, which is an iteration of that. You can see how these are a combination of two brains. This is the reptile and the human brain. And you want to understand, because the human brain is something very big that's projecting into the future. The human brain is projecting into the future. It's the, it's the brain of your dreams. You dream of something higher than what you have. The reptile brain is about the fears of the past, trying to protect and survive. And then the human brain is very much in the present moment. 
wanting to enjoy life and be happy and experience and interact with people. Again, it's very much about the three gunas of tamas, rajas, and sattva. So when you, something like worry about global warming or human beings destroying the planet, destroying the planet projected into the future, which is that higher brain, see, because the, the human brain conceptualizes and projects into the future, and it projects a lot of things into the future. When it's aligned with your higher purpose, then it leads you to greatness. But when it projects fear into the future, then it's the human brain ab ab um, abstracting and worrying about a future that isn't here yet, which is what a lot of those, you will see that a lot of those worries that you have to let go of are a combination of the reptile and the human brain projecting some fearful scenario into the future. And it's an imagined fear. And it's a combination of these two brains. Because uh, the human brain is what imagines something different than what's right now, or imagines something different than what happened before. What's right now is the mammal brain more, and what happened before is the reptile brain. So the human brain imagining something that is fearful is an inner conflict kind of rolled into one scenario. I hope this exercise helped you a little bit and, I'm, and I have other videos in the series. The next video in the series is going to be about quantum physics and the incredible world of how energy becomes matter and becomes form and the an amazing connection between this and consciousness itself. Since the early 20th century we've known that our attention focused into existence itself creates form. So we're going to talk all about the fascinating world of quantum physics and again where quantum physics doesn't reach, astrology reaches very elegantly like you just saw with neuroscience. Neuroscience starts with certain proclamations but they have no connection to astrology. They have no connection to the specifics of it through the planets and through all of that whole matrix and also through individual birth charts where we can see the specifics of an individual's neuroscience clearly. Same way with quantum physics and quantum mechanics. It's one thing to say that we create the universe we live in and this kind of general law of attraction. All of that law of attraction stuff is based on this quantum theory. You know, think and grow rich and all of those self-help um, theories of the 20th century came from quantum physics, but it just kind of it's very general, it's not specific, and I'm going to get very specific in the next video about quantum physics and astrology and how this can really help you attract what you're looking for. Because again, it's the power of attraction, but very specific. So we'll have another exercise like this that can help you align your attention with what you really want Hopefully, maybe we can take out a few levels of those fears and those inner conflicts like we did in this video, and then in the next video, your attention will be a little more pure and a little more clear, and you'll see how, on the quantum level, astrology works. This is why this is called quantum Vedic astrology, because on the quantum level, as affirmed by quantum mechanics, on the molecular level, astrology is focusing, is showing the focus of your awareness and your intention. So, I'll see you in the next video, and Make sure to um, really think about registering for the certification course for the fall semester. It's going to fill up. It's going to fill up probably pretty quickly with these videos because I have a lot of people who are interested already and it's limited space because I can only teach so many people at a given time. So thanks a lot.